we said that this patch is going live on thurs uh, this week, and now yeah. I almost spoiled it because <laughs> it's going live on Thursday. So there we go. Mm. I managed to spoil the spoiler. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. Hello everyone and welcome to the first Surviving the Aftermath stream. I am Davide, I am the community developer for Surviving the Aftermath. Today with me I have Jimmy. Uh, do you want to say what you do at Paradox? So yes, uh, I am doing, uh, I'm working as a live content producer. So I'm doing this. We also have a guest with us. Yes, we have a guest uh, live from Tampere. We have Matti from Iceflick Studios. Hi Matti. Hi, hello. I'm Matti from, from Tampere, as they said. Uh, I'm the game designer, or one of them, for Aftermath. We actually are about to release the very first update to the game. We had some hot fixes that we put together right after release to address uh, major bugs that were preventing new guys from enjoying the game. And right now we are ready to add more content. Uh, we also know that you guys want to have more visibility on the timeline. Um, and we are looking into a good way to provide you with more information about what's to come. The update is, as the name suggests, about the colony mostly. There's some stuff for the world map as well, but this is all about you, like uh, building, building up, building, building more uh, than before. So this is the metal one, metal extractor. It mm -hmm. pulls uh, pulls stuff from the ground processes it and uh, creates metal and scraps infinitely with uh, one person on the helm. Nice. Uh, nice. Yes. And uh, you can place it like, like all the other extractors only on the dry ground at the moment. We are uh, developing the, this whole feature, feature even more uh, okay. in the future. But uh, as for, for the moment, it's for the dry ground only. And okay. then we have this little fella here, this digger, which is for the plastic. And uh, it works the same as the metal one, uh, extracting uh, plastic from the ground, creating the uh, plastic for, for construction and fiber for clothing. So you don't, you shouldn't have a colonist shivering in the, in the cold anymore after, after you have a few of these going. And uh, last is the concrete one. It's a bit different in the, the visuals, like a big, big, big digger. And it extracts concrete off the dry ground, processes it. And this dude over here uh, will bring it to your colony for all your construction needs. One thing that is very clear to us, but not maybe to our players outside, is that we are not done with resources yet. Like we have more discussions happening around how the resource management works in game. Can you maybe give us like a, like a small sneak peek of the conversation you're having over there? Uh, yeah, uh, we are planning on a feature that allows you to control more on what uh, resources come into your uh, storage and how they are moved between storages. So if you want to micromanage, if you want to really like power game the the hell out of the logistics part you can do that after after that uh, particular feature is done okay. it's still a work in progress but we'll share the details as soon as we can but okay. in the meanwhile you can use this new little thingy which is the the allowed resources uh -huh. so uh until now you've had all these resources here and uh there's no no controlling what goes where so after this update you'll be able to choose like i don't want clothing i don't want medicine i don't want fun boxes here so they'll be stored elsewhere in the mm -hmm. colony in the available uh, storages so you have that for for stockpile storages and and for the so potentially i could create like a whole industrial area where yes. only industrial stuff gets stored and then instead having like the living area where all the food and the general population needs are stored, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, for wow. example, you can like the extractors are like a really natural places for that. So mm -hmm. you place a place plastic extractor or two and then create all the, the clothing production here. 
set up a warehouse that only accepts clothing so you have all all that in in one place if you if you so desire another thing that uh, we heard a lot of feedback about is science points uh, yeah. because apparently players were struggling getting enough science point to progress with the tech uh, yeah. did you introduce anything to address this yeah uh, we have science points coming from events now so uh, when certain people come to your ca uh, gate uh, asking for aid they might reward you with uh, some amount of science points it's not a huge amount but it should uh, add to the to those you find on the world map so uh, if you're just a hundred or two hundred short of the next uh, unlock mm -hmm. uh, you should definitely keep an eye I out for for the gate events now. I also know that you guys introduced uh, more tech options. Can we go through them for production? Mm -hmm. uh, we have now the battery stacking, which unlocks the large battery stack uh, rack for for your colony. It stores a huge amount of uh, energy for when your lights go out or, or like uh, power plants stop working, and then. Uh, the ones you already saw the extractors are here in uh, industrial mining so okay. and also as a little tidbit we added icon support for the for the tech so it's a bit easier to see what goes in what comes out then we have a few more in the security tree mm -hmm. uh, which is the reinforced gate uh, mm -hmm. uh, which unlocks immediately the second level of the gate it looks uh, pretty intimidating as you might have already seen can you show uh, us sure thing uh, it's this here it covers uh, the whole area pretty well with metal plates and also uh, with it you can now see uh, if survivor groups have conditions on them so previously uh, when you accept the group in you don't know in what condition they are at but uh, mm -hmm. after the gate upgrade you can see if they are infected or if they have injuries and that might affect uh, your decision to let them in or not you can <laughs> see that there is a new small um, like a new small voice in the left hand side of the screen that says uh, the conditions so here we have six injured colonies in the screen and you can then accept or reject knowing what's their yep. health status overall then one final thing uh, is the centralized repairs. Uh, this unlocks the maintenance depot, which is our solution for the, the bigger bigger colonies and, and their uh, maintenance needs. So here you have the depot itself. It's this uh, little uh, shack here. Oh, you, can, you can yeah. staff it uh, with uh, maximum three people and then move the work area where you want it to uh, operate so for example if you really want to take care of these uh, nice houses here you can set it here and if they get uh, damaged these guys will immediately pop into action deliver the needed resources here set them up for repairs themselves so you don't have to worry about these cabins anymore and I think that you showed us while you were showing this building something really interesting because the work areas also look very yep. different from what we've seen so far. Yeah. So uh, we've taken in, in a lot of feedback from them and uh, made some real improvements for the work areas. Mm -hmm. So let's see. Let's take the stockpile here. <coughs> Sorry. So uh, now the area is a bit clearer. And uh, once you set it, you can see the arrow going in. But you can also see the arrows from other similar work areas going in. So if you're wondering oh. if, oh. Uh, <laughs> like, I, I'm setting up here, is anything gathering this? You can see that this arrow is pointing to that stockpile. So you can manage a bit better, like, uh, I'm, am I collecting everything I can? And, and with other areas, we have uh, improvements for the for the build mode as well so if you place a fishing hut mm -hmm. you can now see uh, the areas 
it fishes from and if it gives full efficiency on on the on the right side there and and the same goes to the trapper mm -hmm. it uses the trees uh properly now and uh you can see like does it have enough trees on its work area to collect or, or trap the the small game animals in in sufficient numbers the same goes to the well uh with the well it now collects more water from the the green lush fertile areas some from the normal ones and nothing from the dry one so you can see like if you place it here it only mm -hmm. works at 62 percent because like lots of the areas on on dry land so if you want to get everything out of it place it on on here it produce actually produces more water than you could before if it's on the perfect spot okay so and also you have to place them uh some ways away, uh, away from from your previous wells so let's see here's uh, a well i have placed before so now you can't place it next to it anymore you have to uh go over the uh, its uh, area of effect to place yeah. it so you can't make the the well parks anymore you could and also there is a little halo telling you where the area of the other well ends, yes. right okay yeah. and then let's talk a little bit about our colonists because i also know that you made some changes that might make little like a little bit more challenging to make them happy i don't know i, I can't spawn one right now but there are two different uh two different things uh that should be interesting for the player and uh, quite horrible for the for the colonists so uh the first one is splash damage okay. uh, which means that meteors will now injure everything around their impact area so it's it's both buildings it's uh, it's colonies uh, colonists as well so you might want to stop uh, putting everything in a like a tight cluster mm -hmm. and space them out a bit more the damage isn't huge but it should be interesting more interesting than than the previous system of of striking just one and the, the second one is are, are these nuclear wastes that have been a nuisance this uh, like thus far but uh what this is a per perfect uh, example of a horrible placement because now they occasionally puff out uh, clouds of, of, of nuclear uh, waste mm -hmm. and they drift over uh, the deposit itself and harm buildings and people uh, on, on their uh, immediate vicinity. So this school, you know, like take it away, Pro like save the children, please. Okay. Um, so the the green cloud will not move around though. It will no. stay just in that area. Really, like you need to be next yeah. to a. Okay, so that's yeah. that's reasonable so it, and just yeah. like requires a bit of better planning. But I also know that you are included a cool personalization option for the colonists in the yeah. sense that you can. You want to say it yourself? Yes, you can rename colonists. Okay. <laughs> so if you want to uh typo like madman oh hi i'm a colonist oh you that can, looks like know. me a bit it actually does <laughs> yeah. finally uh the big another big change that we're making is regarding graphics uh especially on the world map do you want to do you want to show them uh, yes we do okay so, can you uh, the world mess world map is getting uh, a revamp uh, in graphics it's still uh work in progress but uh we've added lots of uh different little things uh created uh more variety to each uh each different area or like biome so uh, you have these properly destroyed uh, uh sectors some urban ones that kind of stuff everywhere also if if someone hasn't noticed yet we've added more uh iodine pills and and all that good stuff on the world map as well so there's more more of that rare 
rare uh, stuff for for your uh, people to pick. Previously, you didn't quite know what's gonna happen before you attack, and now you'll get a preview of uh, of the damage that you will inflict on the bandit and what they are gonna do to you in in retaliation. So you can see that you're you're doing uh, from one to four damage to this uh, person here and suffering 11 to 16 yourself. So now you might decide like, okay, yeah, sure, it's quite a bit of damage, but uh, the bandit only has 10 hit points. So what the hell, I'll, I'm gonna go and go pummel it anyways. If there is any modder that is currently following the stream, uh, what I want to say is that we would also love to showcase your work here and talk about it with Matti or other guests from Iceflake. So if you have a cool mod that you want to, to show us, uh, you can send me a message on the forums. I'm Davi Davi. Uh, if you go on the Surviving the Aftermath uh, section of the forums, you will find my profile posting all the patch notes at the moment. So just click that and it's also very easy. Davide, Davi Davi. Uh, it's basically my name. Um, and yeah, uh, we really look forward to see what you guys have, have to offer and we really want to show to the rest of the community what you guys are working on and what's your take on the game. We said that this patch is going live on Thurs uh, this week and now yeah. I almost spoiled it because <laughs> it's going live on Thursday. So there we go. Yeah. I managed to spoil the spoiler. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. So we are currently planning to have one up one content drop let's go to say this way like an update that contains content every month or so uh this does not mean ev like absolutely every four weeks but expect some flexibility around because again the ways of game development are many mm -hmm. and things get change a lot but yeah i would say that every like you can expect like during the early access phase one update per month uh yeah. let's remind everybody in game there is a ladybug on the top right uh, corner of the screen and you can use that to open a menu where you can send us your feedback and we really look at that uh, we have regular meetings reviewing everything that goes through the tool and to discuss how this will impact the future of the game, how your opinion will impact the future of the game and its development um, yeah I think that we are made we made the stream happen yes so good job us yeah and Thanks to everybody that joined so far. Yep. Thanks to all the players that uh, are taking part in the early access for surviving the aftermath. Again, we are really, really overwhelmed by all your, or not over overwhelmed by how many of you are participating and grateful for all your feedback. We'll see you next week for the stream with me and Jimmy. It's going to be exciting. Yeah, it's going to be great. <laughs>